So let's go look at our key metrics here. And as I said, the main ones that we're going to look at are R squared, our p values and then once we get through those we'll take a look at our coefficients so r squared this is the first thing that we look at this is telling us how well our curve quote unquote fits and so we've got 99.48 percent or 99.5 percent that's that's pretty good so what does this tell us 99.5 percent of the variation can be explained by this equation. Yeah, let's let's be a little more technical. It can be explained by the units produced and the location of the plant. It's either one, two, or three. Okay, so that's good. But now what we have to do is we have to go look at our p-values. These, these are the important ones. Remember, we're not worrying about intercept because the intercept is the intercept. You can't remove the intercept anyway, so we're not worrying about the p-values. So remember, we're looking for things that are statistically significant, and we can see here that all p-values are much, much less than 0 0.5, so that's our confidence threshold. And so since all of them are less than 0 0.05, what does that tell us? Well, we want to keep all three independent variables. So there's no reason to get rid of any of the models. Okay, so... Our regression statistic, R squared, tells us that everything, the variation is pretty much explained by the independent variables we have. The independent variables that we're using are all statistically significant. So now what we're going to do is we're going to bop down and we're actually going to put together our regression equation. And so our regression equation, what is it going to be? It is going to be total cost. And this is going to be in dollars, is going to be equal to 22,851.94 plus 204.15 times the number of units produced. And then we're going to multiply that by 12,000. 971.97 times plant 2, and then we're going to, it's a multiplication that should be had, and then to that we're going to add to that negative 15,045.29 times plant 3. And so this is our regression equation. And so we have a couple things to remember. What do we got? Well, units produced. What is that? That is the number of units produced at, at the plants, all the plants. Uh, number of units produced at well, it's actually at that specific plant because of the way that our data is set up, we're looking at each plant. So the number of units produced at the plant. Okay. Uh, plant two. What is that? Once again, <laughs> once again, it's one if produced at plant two. This is otherwise at zero. And then our last variable is point three. And I'm just going to change the number. So plant three, same thing. If it's produced at plant three, it's one. It's otherwise it is zero. So there's our regression equation. And let's talk about what the slopes mean. Because it's not just enough to be able to say, here's the equation. 
we need to know what the equation means. The actual um, dissection of the math is important, especially it's going to become even more important when we do 6 of 3, so it's important to know what's going on here. So let's look at the slopes for units produced. And so what does that tell me? That tells me that if the number of units increases by 1, because we are talking about straight lines, then the total cost increases by $204.15. Now, this is not... Mm. Yeah, maybe we can. I don't know if we can really, you know, flat out just say that this is the variable cost because there are other things going on within the individual plants. So, want to be very careful about saying this is the this is the um, the variable cost because plant two and plant three, these numbers that they're going to give us are not the fixed cost. So let's take a look at plant two. So what is the interpretation of plant two? Now you have to remember that we have this all keyed to where zero would be plant one. So plant one is going to be 22,851.94 plus 204.15 times the unit produced. This will all be zero. So you can kind of say for plant one that units produced will be the variable cost because there's no influence of plant two and three in there where there's some different costs going on. And we can uh, probably say that that intercept on this case would be the fixed cost for plant one. But that's not what the company's asking for. They're asking, is there a difference between making it at plant one, plant two, and plant three? So let's look at it this way. If I look at plant one, the equation is 22,851.94 plus 204.15 times the units produced. So if I make the same amount at plant two, plant three will be zero. What's the equation? Well, it's the same equation plus an additional cost of almost $13,000. So what does that tell me? That tells me if plants one and two produce the same amount then the total cost of plant 2 is expected to be let's see where's the dollar sign $12,971.50 more than plant one. Okay, do you see how that comes about? Because it's basically, if we just look at it, this zeroes out for plant one, this would be a one here for plant two, so it would be the same as plant one plus this $12,000. Okay, let's look at plant three. So I've got plant three, let's do the same thing. If plants one and three produce the same amount, of units, then, well, let's take a look at the equation. So plant two would be zeroed out here, so plant one would still be 22,851, da, 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 times units produced, this would be zero, and then that leaves plant three. Plant three is adding, and we're losing that negative sign there, so it's adding a negative 15,045 dollars times plant three. So then what's going to happen is that's going to be $15,000 cheaper than plant one. $15,045.29 less than plant one. And so hopefully you can see that from the equation. This becomes 1, this is 0 for plant 3, so it's just going to be cheaper than plant 2. So, what's our conclusion? Well, if we look at it, that means that the cost as plant 3 
plant three is going to be the cheapest is going to be less than plant one but plant one is less than plant two and so if we go back to them and say okay look whatever they're doing at plant three is working better so maybe we should get some of the the managers and the engineers at plant three and go over to plant two and get plant two doing the same thing or there might be some other things going on all this analysis has told us is there's something that plant three is doing whether it's management level engineering level technology level something is going on at plant three that makes it more efficient than plant one and plant two so that's stuff to look at okay so now we still have to put together our predicted cost and we still have to look at our absolute error and our absolute percentage error and we'll do that in the next video